just to give you a trick when you want to record on a cassette deck to a cassette from an external source so line in you actually don't hear the sound when your external source is playing so right now i did connect the deck with a line in that goes behind the deck into the in uh, ports and this is my laptop this is a line out obviously it's just a video i'm playing from youtube so youtube does work at this point it has sound but when you connect it to the tape you cannot hear that sound that's how it goes if you want to hear the sound to actually synchronize the recording what you want to do is first play pause push it down and it's going to stay there so push down pause and then press rec and play at the same time you can use two fingers just synchronize them and at this point the deck it's paused it doesn't spin it doesn't record it doesn't play it doesn't do anything the cassette doesn't doesn't run it stays in pause mode with rec and play but you can at this point listen to the sound of your input source so this is the sound that I'm playing right here. This is a priest from uh, Mount Athos in Greece. You see the trick? So if I would stop the red play and pause, just stop it. Whoops, the sound disappears. So this is how you capture the sound before starting the recording. Press pause, it stays there. Press select rec and play and you get the sound and if you want to start the actual recording just release the pause button then the cassette starts spinning and recording if you want to pause it just press pause if you want to stop it stop the two buttons release but at this point again you don't hear that sound so yes that's how it goes and you can actually use this very uh, very thing if you have a double decker like this one you just pause the uh, press the pause button keep it it stays down then rec and play at the same time i think it i wonder if you can actually uh i think you yeah, actually, if you press only on rec, usually it will depress the play button, but it's better not to force the mechanism. That's why I like to press, uh, put my finger on both of them at the same time. And uh, you just pause it like this, then you start the other cassette. I don't have a cassette in there, but you just start it. And actually what's happening is that the uh, it has a small noise, my, uh, my unit. The pause button releases automatically and it starts recording so my cassette here is spinning and this one it's playing if you want to record from the other so, so right now it, there's nothing there. i'm curious if i stop it if it's releasing in there let's see and then try this uh no it doesn't stop it here so you have to stop it now it's only for play and rec so if i would press pause and play yes it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, run so if i would release play, pause it starts it starts playing so pause is for play or for play and record or if you want when you actually press uh, for those that you are uh, of you that are uh, young um, when you wanted to record on the cassette you had to press down or both these buttons it's maybe it's it's maybe not logical but that's how it works so you don't just you don't just press the red button when you record you press rec and play together it's just like this for some mysterious reason the engineers were using back in the days i don't know maybe it has to do with the mechanical way it works inside that you have to press both uh, both of these buttons remember these cassettes also had a anti-record uh, tab plastic tab on both sides because each side corresponds to one rolling way so one tab is for one side of the cassette the other type it's uh, tab is for the other side of the cassette basically you know you can switch the cassettes like this uh, this tape by the way it's playing with the tape down some other decks or uh, cassette players will 
play with the tape up. Just look where the mechanism is. It's just a manufacturing choice if you want. So again, these tabs would correspond each form for one way of recording. So these tabs here, if the tab, you see there is a hole, but what's important is the tab on the side of the hole. On a cassette that you buy virgin from the store, it will always have this plastic here. And this allows you to record on this cassette. If this plastic is broken here, either it's a cassette that has been, uh, it's a genuine cassette with original songs, both from a stores. They came with this tab broken. You can just fill it with a piece of paper if you want to record, or maybe someone recorded that on that cassette. And then to prevent uh, from accidental re-recording and erasing, that person broke the tape, uh, the tab here. So you can actually push with your finger and break this little tab so no one can record again on that cassette by mistake. But again, you can just replace the tab with a small, usually I think we would fill this with a piece of paper. Uh, just, I, I don't know if the whole hole here or just the left side, we just refill it with some paper and then you can keep recording on the cassette. And I wanted to point something. So this cassette here, it's a uh, type two metal one. Um, it's a TDK, it's one of the good ones, not top of the line, but it was really popular and price-wise was a good option. And uh, again, this one being type two, it's metal. And also you notice it's 90 minutes. So it's, there's two, two types of cassettes I have here, a Sony, which is also metal. And this one is 60 minutes, which means 30 minutes each side. This one 90 means 45 minutes each side. Um, that was the limit, basically. And um, I wanted to show something when you have a deck like this, you also have usually a switch and it says metal, normal and whatnot. I can tell you that it's actually to you to just record a test Whatever your cassette is, obviously metal ones are going to be better quality sound. Not enormously better, but better. But even if I use a metal cassette, actually I record in normal mode. It's really up to you to test it and see if you like the sound, uh, the result of recording better with normal or whatever else position. It's not always that the metal corresponding position, it will sound the best, at least for it's just subject, it's right. It's pretty dusty. Uh, also, I do, uh, because I have a line, uh, line in actually, I do put the level to max. It's just kind of uh, give you a louder sound. And you need to switch it to line to your unit. So make sure you check for these buttons and uh, you just switch to line. If it was like this, it will record from the other double cassette. And also this unit allows you to record from the second cassette at high speed. So it takes less time. It's instead of 30 minutes per side, I don't know how much faster is it. Maybe, maybe 15, 20 minutes, somehow faster. And also finally, you see most of these units had this fancy Dolby B, whatever system. But I can show you that I'm actually deactivating the Dolby function. So I always record and play back with Dolby to the off position. And it's a matter of preference. I think the sound with the Dolby engaged, Dolby was meant to reduce background noise. But at the same time, it kind of causes the sound to be muffled, both when you record and when you play back. So I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of Dolby. Uh, sound uh, background noise reduction system. That's why I put it to off. Up to you again. Keep in mind, these are personal choices. Okay, so these units are pretty nice. Uh, I got this one that uh, has all the rubber belt in good condition, works fine. This side here makes kind of a noise, perhaps a gear it's stripped or so, plastic gears inside. Uh, but it's uh, at least it's, it's a good looking unit and uh, you know, these counters mechanical you have a kind of um, peak level sound back in the days it was with needles the older units those are nicer 
but this one it's good good all right thanks for watching